Hi everyone, my name is Anna Kirin and I'm an artist, um, a sculptor, painter and ceramicist. Um, and on today's invitation from Studio Pottery London, I'm going to talk about how I bring all those elements, uh, different practices, different techniques together in my work with ceramics, especially with my um, treatment of the, the surfaces. So, um, here you can see that like i usually work with the glazes that um, are meant to be for dipping because some of the pieces are also dipped but i love that we the glazes that are prepared for dipping you can have all the different almost like lazur like when you're working in, in painting with um with oil or with acrylic when you are uh, making it more liquid and you can work with like how much transparency the color has and you're layering it out so with the glazes that are meant to be for dipping i can achieve or play with a similar effect um and i always have the buckets uh like quite large quantities so that when they started sedimenting i can work with like the thinner layer on the top as well as the really thick uh, layer on the bottom and slowly stirring it up and playing with applying these different thicknesses of the glaze um, to see how much of the texture I want to expose, how much texture I want to be seen and where and like the heights and the lows. Um, there is, that's like pretty much what like I'm getting the most excited about. Where this, this is an example, it's like very, it's very shiny. So I'm gonna try to find um, an angle where you can actually see what I mean. I'm gonna try to do maybe the overhead later, but uh, again, there is the first really important layer. It's already the layer that was made in clay. And after that, um, I play with the different pigments and oxides in trying to achieve effects that would look almost like when I was working with my etchings. So the color has different like velvetness and intensity and um, it creates really dark, deep moments where on some it's, it's like looking into the sea or um, sometimes into the sky. So I'm going to firstly demonstrate on one smaller piece that I can hold in my hand while I'm showing you. These are my favorite brushes. Um, when I'm painting more of the patterns, I work with the ones that have a nice texture when it comes to uh, creating beautiful pointy beads um, and this is the hacke brush I mentioned earlier so um, the piece with in a B square with the texture that I left with my hands which I'm going to show you um, as well um, you have seen that part so here is how much of my traces from working with my hands I live in it sometimes more and sometimes less but this is like where I found it really interesting to play with on my work so um, I want them to, live, to look sometimes like they're coming from the nature they're almost like this volcanic creature um, and at the same time they have the human touch um, which is the traces that we leave in them so that's related directly to my work that I was always exploring how we leave traces in one another and um, and how the objects would look different because of our use in a way. So this is one of the, my, my favorite pigments. Um, this is the very liquidy um, layer where you can still see extremely a lot of the clay coming through which is going to affect the final color um, and then i would play with adding much more uh, thick layer of the pigments um, and try to leave it as well to the chance of drips this is really crazy to be demonstrating in a reverse but i'm quite enjoying it um, out of my comfort zone completely um, so yeah, this is all really welcome. Here we go. I'm trying to record for you an overhead 
of seeing how beautifully it absorbs the color and how different textures with layering work together. It's, I try to find something that is simple enough and it's easy enough to, to record. So, um, and try to find a piece that it's wide enough and open so we can actually see what is happening. I try to play with exposing on certain elements the traces that my hands left on the clay um, where you can really see the fingerprints and um, the traces yeah of not just fingers but the hands so uh, the movement that I do when I'm when I'm kind of like blending it together I try to have these like expressive elements in it they're very active that feel like you can really see um, the action of being the clay being touched and moved it's almost like an embrace when you're touching someone's skin or hand and you're stroking them I try to trap some sort of kinetic energy in, in it and the movement that feels um, you know that gives you the feeling of feeling that it you can really feel it so it's not as an exciting I think um, when until you don't see how this is gonna show up we through the firing but um, I'm gonna show you here an example so it is it's gonna be much darker than this piece because the clay that I used here was a lighter stoneware, but this is kind of what I'm going for. Here's an example of the mold, um, the clay being pressed in a mold already, and me kind of halfway working on um, creating the texture over the surface. Uh, with pressing the clay while also um, with the, the movement of my hands creating um, as much traces um, that would kind of resemble the yeah the movement in the piece so I love how um, if you can really see in them those traces being kept in a way that there's like a dynamic element, dynamic storytelling of how they were touched. <laughs> it's really hard to record that, but it's It's playing with layers and layers until you don't find a pattern that feels right without compromising um, how the piece have, have been pressed into the mold. So I always firstly construct it really well um, so that it's solid and um, I'm not going to compromise the quality of the piece. And then on the end, I spend some time um, as long as it takes playing with the surface you want to find a balance between the surface being alive and tactile and being having these dynamic traces that are full of feelings um, and looking just messy <laughs> so there is a thin line sometimes between the two but for me it's also important that I prepare the surface in the way that the pigments that is going to become really alive when you create the glazes and the pigments on the top so you want the different depths um, and the texture so when the pigment sinks into uh, the deeper parts and it's more exposed on the heights it creates this beautiful architecture of the surface really alive and here you can see as well that um, the clay that I use often in this instant is has like quite um, strong 
rock um, which with this particular type of glazing that I've been showing you today that I do and I really gives me a lot of um, joy um, it, ex it becomes really beautifully exposed um, and it becomes like little sp uh, sparkles almost um, I want to thank you all for spending a little bit of time with me in my studio um, and thank you Gregory and Lucy for invitation um, I hope everyone is having some sort of ways, finding ways to having a nice time during the isolation and reconnecting with things they wanted to do. Um, we are all there for one another, we're together in this and um, I'm sure when we come on the other side it's going to be really wonderful to share the experiences we've all been through because the self-isolation I think is bringing, is creating this beautiful space for each of us to kind of like self-reflect as well. Um, I hope everyone is fine, healthy, take care of yourself, stay safe and hope to see you on the other side. Lots of love.